I'm sorry this video has taken such a long time to finish, but I've been tied up with a few things and also writing book two, Beyond the Basics. The book is now finished and should be available on Amazon in the next week or two. The book has more than 500 photos and diagrams showing how to make more than 40 Kumiko patterns in the square, diamond and hexagonal layouts. Every pattern on my website at kskdesign.com.au that wasn't in book one is in this book. Now back to the shoji. Once the styles have been done we then move on to the, uh, the rails and the uh, horizontal skeko and the horizontal kumiko. Now the uh, dimensions are different, the measurements are different, but the actual process is no different from what we followed with the, uh, with the styles. So here again I'll use one of the rails to mark and that will then become the uh, story stick for the, um, the horizontal skeko and also the horizontal kumiko. Uh, you can use the top rail, bottom rail, it doesn't really matter. The important thing is that the marking is all done on the inside edge. So marking from the left on the inside edge. Mark the outer ends of the uh, tenons. Okay, remember the tenons are 21 millimeters. So mark 21 millimeters back from there. And that then becomes the tenon shoulder. Take the, uh, the skeko, and exactly as we did uh, with the styles, place the skeko against the, uh, the square, move it across until that uh, tenon shoulder mark is no longer visible, then place a mark. That's the uh, skeko mark. From here, the first kumiko is 66 millimeters. So I measure 66 millimeters across and mark. And the keeper towards the rear. Okay, that's the first kumiko, and the kumiko sits to the right of that mark. The uh, the next two kumiko are 70 millimeters. So from the first kumiko mark, make a mark 70 millimeters. And that's the second kumiko. Again, 70 millimeters, and that's the third and last kumiko. So mark another 70 millimetres. That is then the inside edge of the skeko. So in exactly the same way, take your square and its skeko, move it across until the mark you just made is no longer visible. That then becomes the tenon shoulder. From there, 21 millimetres. And that's the end of the tenon. That is waste. And that's waste. Okay, so we've got our two tenons, we've got the skeckle marks, and we've got the three kumiko. We now use this to mark off the other rail. So again, as we did with the styles, clamp the uh, two rails together, making sure that you have the correct left-right orientation and proceed to, uh, to transfer the marks from the first rail across to the second rail. And don't forget to mark which side the uh, kumiko sit. The process for transferring the marks from the rail to the horizontal skeko and kumiko is exactly the same as the process for the styles. Once you've done that, set your marking gauge to 5.8 millimeters and mark 5.8 millimeters as the back of each of the mortises for the uh, kumiko. So from the back, mark 5.8 millimeters. Remember making sure to mark on the kumiko side of the mark. When you've done that, set the marking gauge to 12.2 millimeters, which is the 5.8 plus the uh, 6.4, and mark the 
other edge of the, uh, the cumicle mortises. And finally it's time to uh, make the marks for the cumicle mortises in the uh, skekel. This time set the marking gauge to 4.3 millimetres. So with the marking gauge set at uh, 4.3 millimetres, just mark the back edge of each of the, uh, the cumicle mortises again, remembering to make sure you mark on the cumicle side. Add 6.4 to your um, to the 4.3 to get uh, 10.7. And that's the other edge of the, uh, the Kumiko mortise. Well, that's all the marking for now. The next step is cutting mortises in the, uh, the styles. Remember from the exercises, the mortises are 22 millimetres deep. Uh, but the difference is this time we have mortises, but we also have haunches. OK, so the mortises are 22 millimetres deep the haunches are just over eight millimetres. So make them around about eight and a half millimetres. Once you've cut the mortises, uh, it's then time to move on to the uh, mortises for the cumicle. Okay, these mortises, the mortises for the cumicle are cut to a depth of at least 7.5 millimetres. Okay, so no shallower than 7.5. You can go to eight millimetres, you can go to 8.5. It's not overly critical. Uh, the depth, but somewhere between say 7.5 and 8.5 would be fine, but make sure that they're no shallower than 7.5 millimetres. Right, so we've got uh, the Kumiko mortises in the, uh, in the rails, and now as good a time as any just to uh, trim off the ends of the, um, of the tenons. So at this stage that's the, uh, the rails done. The, uh, the Tzkeko are joined together with uh, 45 degree mitres, so uh, what we need to do now is to cut the ends at, uh, at 45 degrees. The join between the two, uh, two Tzkeko, the vertical and the horizontal Tzkeko, is that Tzkeko mark that we put in before. So the 45 degrees is out from that mark. So what I do is just place a 45 degree mark slightly out from the uh, Tzkeko mark that I made before. So when I'm rough cutting the pieces, uh, I've got a fair idea of what uh, 45 degrees is. So with any saw, I just cut along that 45 degree mark. but make sure you don't cut in to the Tzkeko mark that we made before. Give yourself plenty of leeway. That, that'll be trimmed off on the uh, 45 degree shooting board. So with a nice sharp blade in the, uh, in the plane and 45 degree shooting board, trim down to that Tzkeko line that we marked earlier on. So it just touches that line. Don't go past it. So I've now finished the, uh, the Tzkeko. We've done the styles. All that's left now is to, uh, to mark the position of the tenons from the, uh, the mortises in the styles, then uh, mark and cut the Jaguchi joint and also the, uh, the tenon shoulder on the back face, and then down to the, uh, the table saw and cut out the actual tenons themselves. The next step is to mark the back and the sides of the, uh, the rails on the shoulder marks. Don't mark the front, only the sides and the back. With the sides you only have to make a fairly light mark for the sides. Now do that on both of the rails. The next step is to make the Jaguchi mark. So mark three millimetres from the shoulder mark on the side we made earlier. Remember that three millimetres is towards the end.
and mark that across the front. That's our Jaguchi mark. Do it on the other side. Three millimeters towards the end. We've made our two Jaguchi marks. Now do that on the other rail. Next we mark the uh, tenons on the, uh, the rails. And we take those from the, the mortises that we cut into the styles earlier on. So make sure the, the styles are properly aligned, bottom and top. Work on the top one first. First of all, make sure you've got the top rail on the top of the style. Make sure that the front of the rail is flush with the front of the style and with a sharp pencil just place marks where the mortises are. Exactly the same as we did with the exercise. And do the same on the and do the same on the, the top. With the bottom rail, exactly the same process. First of all, make sure you're on, actually on the bottom of the style. Make sure the front of the, the rail is flush with the front of the style. And place a mark with a sharp pencil where the uh, mortises are. And again, do it on the back as well. Once you've made the marks, just extend the front mark all the way to the, uh, the shoulder and also the back. Okay, it only has to be fairly rough, it doesn't have to, you don't have to be anal about it, but just extend the front line to the, uh, the shoulder mark and also the, uh, the back line. And do that with, uh, with all sides of the, uh, the rails. Okay, so now we've got the, the outside tenon marks. The next step is to cut the back down to the tenon mark we just marked and also to cut the jaguchi. Uh, it doesn't matter which way uh, you do it, you can do the uh, back first, jaguchi second, or jaguchi first, the back second, it doesn't really matter, they both have to be cut. Um, what I'll do is, is uh, I'll cut the back first, cut the back down to the tenon mark. Turn around, do it on the other side or the other end. Make sure it goes all the way to the, to the line and do the same on the other rail. The next step is uh, cutting the jaguchi, and this is exactly the same as we did in the exercise. So pull the saw back to establish the curve. Then cut it around about 45 degrees. Then use the 45 jaguchi jig to continue and complete the cut.
and cut down to the line we marked earlier. So we've now finished all of our marking, we've cut our jaguchi, we've cut the, the back for the back shoulder. What we have to do now is to cut the, the tenons on the, uh, the end of the rails. Once you've cut the tenons on the rails, clean up all of the waste between the tenons and also between the uh, tenon and the jaguchi. Okay, keep your chisel well away from the edge, from the sharp edge of that jaguchi. Once you've cleaned the waste from, the, uh, from between the tenons and the rails, it's then time to mark the, uh, the haunch and the actual tenon itself. So the width of the rails is 45 millimetres. When we cut the mortise in the, uh, in the styles, the mortise itself was 22 millimetres. The haunch was 23 millimetres. The haunch was to a depth of around about eight and a half millimetres. What we do now is the tenon on the rails is 23 millimetres and the haunch is 22 millimetres. What that means is that the tenon is one millimetre larger than the, uh, the mortise that it fits into. Now this is with softwood. If you're making this with hardwood, make this around about half a millimetre. What that does is, as the, uh, the tenon goes into the mortise, it compresses the tenon, so it forces the edge of the tenon against the edge of the mortise. And that gives a very, very firm, tight, gap-free fit. Now when you're marking the tenons and the haunch, make sure that the tenons are on the inside. Don't mark the tenons on the outside and mark the haunch on the inside. And don't laugh, I have seen it happen. So make sure that the tenon is marked on the inside and the haunch is marked on the outside. So first mark the haunch, that's eight millimetres from the shoulder extend that mark around continue it parallel and from the bottom mark up 23 millimeters And that's the waste from the haunch. On this side, mark eight millimeters. Extend that around. From the inside, Mark 23 millimetres. And that's the waste. So there's the tenon. There's the haunch. And that's waste. There's the inside. Make sure that's not around the other way. Once you've marked the tenons, and the haunches, just cut down and cut the, uh, the haunches off. When you're cutting the haunches, just be very careful of the uh, jaguchi. Once you've cut the haunches off, just chamfer around the ends of the tenon. Again, just to protect the, uh, the edges a bit.
Once we've finished chamfering the, uh, the tenons, it's now time to move on and cut the, uh, the rebates in the, uh, the rails that allow the shoji to slide within their uh, grooves at the top and the bottom. We have 21 millimetres, 12 millimetres and another groove at 21 millimetres. This is the standard uh, measurements for the, uh, the Kantor region. Grooves at the top are normally 15 millimetres deep. The grooves at the bottom are 3 millimetres deep. We mark 19 and a half millimetres from the back and the rebate is taken off from the front. This 19 and a half millimetres allows the shoji to slide smoothly uh, in the uh, 21 millimetre groove. So on the bottom of the bottom rail, mark 19 and a half millimetres from the back. And on the top rail, mark 19 and a half millimetres from the back on the top of the top rail. And the bottom of the bottom rail mark four millimetres up and on the top of the top rail on the face mark 12 millimetres down. Once we've cut the rebates in the, uh, the rails, the only uh, step left before we move on to uh, cutting the kumiko is to uh, get a very, very wet uh, cloth and thoroughly wet the, uh, the rails and the styles. What this does is it, uh, it raises the grain and then with the final planing before assembly uh, it leaves a very smooth, highly polished finish. So we just wet these and then set them aside, let them dry while we work on the, uh, the kumiko. So the rails and styles are now thoroughly wet uh, raise them off the bench so there's air circulating underneath to allow them to, uh, to dry evenly. Uh, while they're drying we then move on to cutting the kumiko and we'll, uh, we'll tackle that in the next video.